Hi everyone, welcome back to Ovesen.net. Norway is uh, almost at a complete shutdown now to battle uh, this virus. Uh, me, myself, in my daytime I work as a software engineer working for a company that uh, develops systems for uh, our hospitals. So I hope you all stay well and that you stay in business. So uh, please enjoy this video. Thanks. Here you can see the result of uh, some uh, retrobrighted uh, Commodore 64 keyboard keys and uh, this one uh, went wrong as you can see the keys are way too uh, light almost white at the top they should be black or brown I retrobrighted this with uh, hydrogen peroxide cream because uh, the letters were yellowed, but I had them too long in the solution, so they went all white instead of black. Anyway, that's not the theme for this uh, video. The theme for this video is about this uh, Wi-Fi dongle for the Commodore 64. So I got this uh, little board from a seller on uh, Norwegian uh, fin.no and uh, he produces this himself um, I don't know what it's based on uh, looks like a, some sort of microcontroller like an Arduino but uh, it has a Wi-Fi chip here and then Wi-Fi antenna and then it's uh, soldered on to this edge connector that fits into the Commodore's user port the back side has uh, just a warning do not connect the usb cable while connected to your c64 uh, so there's not a microcontroller chip on this board this chip here is a usb to serial communication chip and uh, i guess this board can be used uh, standalone uh, for uh, providing wi-fi to an arduino for example Anyway, I'm gonna test this on my Commodore 64 and see if uh, I can use it to communicate with other machines. So even if this uh, small card provides uh, a Wi-Fi uh, communication solution to the Commodore, there's uh, no TCP IP uh, stack or anything like that on uh, this card and not uh, on the Commodore either it's uh, the machine is too limited with too uh, little RAM to provide that anyway uh, but what it can do is to communicate with uh, other machines uh, using uh, the old eight, uh, AT commands for Hayes modem protocol or what you call it um, uh, that's uh, old uh, communication protocols that were used uh, before uh, for the different BBS uh, sites. So to be able to uh, communicate uh, with a Wi-Fi card uh, you need a terminal program and I have uh, downloaded this one CCGMS 2019 which is uh, a terminal program. For the Commodore 64, you can find the link to the download in the description. Alright, this is the terminal program, CCGMS, and um, I'm not really familiar what it does, but uh, it has a few uh, menus here, like F7, that is the settings. Uh, things like that so uh, what we need to do now is to configure uh, the program to use uh, uh, the Wi-Fi adapter via serial communication uh, on the user port so I'm not really familiar with the uh, old times uh, serial communication and uh, AT modem commands but of course I found uh, recipe here on the internet so I'm gonna try that now 
So the terminal program has uh, two uh, different uh, terminal options. Uh, this is like the graphics terminal and if you press F8 you switch to an ASCII terminal. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go into the settings menu and then change the modem type uh, to user port. And it's user port 300 to 2400. Then I'm going to set the baud rate to 300. Then I press return to go back to the terminal. Then when you press return, it will uh, print out some stuff from the Wi-Fi modem. And here you can uh, type, for example, uh, AT and then uh, question mark to get the list of commands you can use. So here you can see that in order to configure the Wi-Fi SSID and password, you type the commands AT dollar SSID and AT dollar pass. So I switched to the, the ASCII terminal now and I'm gonna issue the command AT dollar SSID equals and then the name of my uh, uh, Wi-Fi network. Then press enter and then you get OK and then you type $80 pass and then I show you my password which is uh, Next I change to the graphics terminal and then I'm gonna enter the command ATC1. This will connect to the Wi-Fi. Alright, then it's connected and I got an IP address. Uh, excellent. Then you have to set some uh, uh, communication uh, parameters, A, T, uh, and K1, uh, A, T, and P0, which is the polarity, A, T, dollar uh, S, B equals 9600 to set the board rate. Uh, next I go back into the settings and uh, set back the board rate to 2400. Uh, no, I can't, that's uh, wrong. You first have to set the modem type. So I set it to uh, UP9600 and then I can set the, the baud rate to 9600. Then I press S to save the settings uh, to the default file name. Return to go back. All right, I don't know what happened. I uh, did uh, all the steps once more and then I return again all right now it worked I typed ATI and I get the Wi-Fi status then you can type AT and W to save the settings to the modem AT and V should show the settings so now we are communicating with the uh, Wi-Fi modem um, at 9600 board. 
and we have a few uh, BBSs already in the speed dial list. I'm clearing uh, the terminal window by uh, pressing Shift Control Home and uh, then press Enter. This will uh, display an error message, but that's okay. So now, in a, in a order to dial up uh, an address, you can use the command A T D S, and then the number one, two. Uh, how many slots there are? So I'm gonna try uh, the saved address number one. All right, that one gave uh, no answer. Let's try uh, ATDS2 then. ATDS3. So it seems that uh, none of the predefined addresses actually work. So uh, I might have to find some other address that I can use. Now, in order to use a BBS that are on the internet, you don't really need to use the Commodore. You can use your uh, other computer and uh, some kind of uh, terminal program that supports uh, uh, Telnet connection type. And uh, I am downloading uh, the Putty uh, program from uh, this site. I'm going to install this. Uh, it's a well-known uh, terminal program that provides a secure shell and uh, telnet uh, uh, features uh, so just downloading the windows version and installing uh, on my computer then I googled a bit and I found this uh, web page here that's called BBS Outpost for uh, the Commodore and um, it lists a lot of uh, BBSs and uh, I just want to test if uh, one of these works with uh, Putty so I select this one first wrong number and it has an address of uh, cibdndns.org and port uh, 6404. So uh, let's enter that information into uh, uh, Putty. And then uh, select the option uh, connection type uh, Telnet and then open. And now you will see that Putty is connecting to the BBS called wrong number version 1.2b. Uh, do you want ANSI colors? Yes. Do you want e B IBM graphics? No. So this means that we are uh, connected to this BBS and I can enter my uh, username or a new for a uh, new user. I'm not going to do that now. I'll try to do this from the Commodore 64. All right, I struggled a bit with uh, connecting the Wi-Fi and it turns out that I was in the graphical mode of the terminal when I entered uh, uh, the SSID and the password uh, the second time so I could not connect however I fixed that and uh, now I am connected so um, let's try the the address I had uh, on my computer so let me try to dial that uh, address I had on my computer A T T T I think is the ATDT and then the address CIB dot DNS dot org at port sixty four oh four. All right, says connecting. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
uh, oh no <laughs> I think that was the wrong uh, selection to have uh, IBM graphics uh, then let me try ATDS1 which was uh, the first stored and now since I'm connected it actually works so now I am con connected to Cottonwood BBS uh, yes I am using the graphic terminal program enter a new so I enter the handle which is my username all right that was a lot of checking uh, so I'm just waiting here um, I actually wasn't uh, that much into BBS uh, uh, before and um, this is kind of a strange world for me uh, even though I heard about them at the uh, in the 80s and 90s when I uh, had my 8-bit and 16-bit computers all right then I enter my password don't look Alright, here's the menu and I can obviously uh, uh, download things by pressing V. So there seem to be uh, quite a lot of uh, things to download here, so um, I'm just watching. Then I can read some messages exciting so let's uh, see what's in t in the general forum then there's the member list Then I just log off. Yes. All right, a nice picture of a tiger. Don't feed the tiger. Okay, this is a frozen floppy. Another BBS. This one has the option to log in as a guest, I guess. All right, I'm back into the terminal and I was thinking, um, how could I actually make my own site that I can connect to from the Commodore? Yeah, let's take a look at that. So in order to create a server that the Commodore can communicate with, you have to uh, implement some kind of telnet server and I thought I'd just make a small uh, weather service and uh, this page is uh, the EAR weather service here in Norway and uh, I think I'm just gonna get some data from that and they have an uh, XML API that can uh, provide the weather data so I'm just gonna read this in a program I am a programmer uh, in my daytime job and uh, here I just uh, wrote a small uh, function to get the forecast from uh, the weather service by zip code and this is written in uh, C sharp uh, in uh, Microsoft Visual Studio. So what it does it just gets out with a, 
uh, web client uh, component and retrieves the XML forecast for the zip code and then it just parses it and returns uh, the data for the weather. Then on GitHub I found a small uh, Telnet server program example. This uh, small program just uh, let you enter uh, uh, a few simple commands and I expanded it to uh, respond to the command weather and uh, if I enter weather and then a zip code it will retrieve the weather for that uh, uh, location. So the program is ready and I'm starting uh, my Telnet server and it will start up a console window on uh, my machine and just wait for uh, incoming uh, calls um, and uh, then I'm gonna use uh, the putty telnet program again and I'm uh, entering uh, local host for the address you can also enter your IP address and then the program, uh, the server I set up uses port 23. And then I select connection type Telnet and press uh, open. So now we see that uh, the server connected to the client and it uh, sent the message uh, ovsn.net c64 weather service so now i'm gonna log in to uh, this uh, service and uh, now it's ready to accept the command and i type uh, weather and my zip code which is uh, almost like this but not that one, this is uh, my hometown. And then it returns the weather information for that zip code. And as you can see, it's uh, minus one degree Celsius. I have a little bug in uh, my program. So let's try some other uh, city like uh, 0301 which is uh, Oslo and there you go the weather in Oslo today is uh, clear and it's uh, a little bit windy and it is four degrees Celsius all right so now I'm ready to call this service from a Commodore and to do that I need to know uh, the IP address uh, of this machine and uh, that you can get by uh, going to command line and typing ipconfig. And here I see that my, um, uh, this is the local IP address on this computer. And uh, also it has to be on the same Wi-Fi network uh, to be able to call this uh, service from the Commodore Wi-Fi. All right, back at the Commodore and I'm ready to call my own service on my PC and, uh, and I just enter ATDT and then my IP address 192.168.10.137 and uh, port 23. All right, there it is. Uvesn.net uh, C64 weather service, and I log in with the uh, root. All right, <laughs> this is uh, excellent. Uh, then I'm gonna get uh, my weather for uh, 8001, which is uh, Bode, my hometown. Okay, minus one degrees. Excellent. 
Let's try 5002, I think it's a Bergen. All right, the server failed because it didn't f find that uh, zip code. I, uh, I did enter some error handling, like if I, if I type whether A, B, C, something. It says wrong number of digits and things like that. Um, let's try 5160, must be some valid zip code. All right, that's the weather for uh, Luxemburg uh, near Bergen at, and there are uh, three degrees Celsius today. Nice. Then I just type exit to go out from the server. All right, that's it for this video. I tested my uh, Wi-Fi uh, card on the Commodore and it works just fine. And I uh, also created a small service just to show how easy it is to create uh, small uh, services that can be consumed by um, this old 8-bit machine, the Commodore 64. So uh, with that, I say thank you and hope you enjoyed this video and see you again next time. Bye bye. Thank you.